Introduction to Factoring. In this video, we'll use the vocabulary factor and product. We'll practice finding all the factor pairs of a number. We'll find the greatest common factor of a set of numbers. And we'll find the greatest common factor of a polynomial and then factor it. A product is the answer to a multiplication problem. And the numbers, or whatever is multiplied, those are called factors. So in the equation 2 times 3 equals 6, 2 and 3 are factors, and 6 is the product. We're going to start by finding factor pairs of numbers. So a number like 12 has three factor pairs. 1 times 12 is one pair. 2 times 6 is another pair, and 3 times 4 is another pair. This skill is going to be helpful for finding the greatest common factor of several numbers and for factoring quadratics. Let's find the factor pairs of 50 for an example. We want to find every possible combination of whole numbers that will multiply to give me 50. I'm going to start by writing numbers down the left-hand side to see if they divide evenly into 50. But I wonder, when should I stop? Well, there's a trick to that, and it's to take the square root of 50. Now, the square root of 50 is about 7. It's 7.07 .07 dot dot dot. So if 50 has a factor that's 8 or greater, it's going to have to be multiplied by something less than 8. So I don't need to go past 7 in my list, and that's a really useful trick. Alright, now let's find the right-hand side. So 1 times something equals 50, that's 50. And there's my first factor pair. And that 1 will always be a factor of every number. 2 divides into 50 evenly, I get 25. That's my second factor pair. But 3 does not divide 50 evenly, so I just cross it off. It's got no whole number factor with 50. Same thing with 4, but when I get to 5, 5 times 10 is 50, so I have another factor pair. 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't work, 8 and 9 don't work either, and then I would get back to 10, but I already have it, because 10 times 5 is 50. So I have now all the factor pairs of 50. I could use my factor pair chart to list all the factors of 50. They are, let's go down in this direction, 1, 2, 5, and then up in the other direction, 10, 25, and 50. Now let's find all the factor pairs of 70. The the square root of 70 is 8 point something, so I'm going to write numbers up to 8, and then I'm going to divide each one of them into 70 to see if I can find some factor pairs. I have 1 and 70, 2 and 35, 5 goes into 70, 14 times, so I have 5 times 14, 6 doesn't work, 7 works with 10, and now I've done. I found them all. 1 and 70, 2 times 35, 5 times 14, and 7 times 10. So factors of 70 are 1, 2, 5, 7, 10, 14, 35, and 70. Now, let's look at those two numbers and see what factors they have in common. So, they both have 1 as a factor. Every number has 1 as a factor. They both have 2 as a factor also, and 5 matches in both lists. But 7 doesn't match. 10 does, though. 25 and 50, no. 14, 35, 70, no. So, I have four common factors. 
there are 1, 2, 5, and 10. You don't need to write out the list of factors since you have it on the chart. You can just look and see what matches on both charts. But usually what we're really interested in is which of these common factors is the greatest. And you've probably heard of the greatest common factor, which is usually abbreviated GCF. It's what we use to simplify fractions. So if this were a fraction, 50 over 70, we could divide the top and bottom by the greatest common factor, which is 10, to simplify the fraction to 5 sevenths. But the greatest common factor is also what we want to use when we're factoring a polynomial expression. We're going to factor the greatest common factor from the polynomial 50x to the fifth minus 70x to the fourth. In any kind of fa polynomial factoring, taking out the GCF is the very first step. So first we look at the two numbers, the GCF of 50 and 70, we found was 10. So we'll start by dividing the whole polynomial by 10. Next we look at the variables. The greatest common factor of variables is pretty easy to find. It's the lowest power that appears in the expression. Because x fourth is a factor of x fifth, x fourth times x equals x fifth. So I'm going to add in that greatest common factor of the variables, x fourth. And now I'm going to divide. Each of the terms in the numerator is divided by the denominator. So I'm doing 50x fifth divided by 10x fourth. That gives me 5x. And I'm doing minus 70x fourth divided by 10x fourth, and that's giving me negative 7. So the number on the bottom that I divided by, the 10x fourth, goes outside the parentheses, and inside the parentheses goes the 5x and the negative 7. If I were to use the distributive property and multiply 10x fourth by the expression in parentheses, I would get back 50x fifth minus 70x fourth. And you can always check your work that way. Well, let's try one more example. Here's a longer polynomial, and the coefficients are 9, 12, and 24. So the GCF of 9, 12, and 24, so the greatest common factor of these three numbers is 3. That's going to go in the denominator. And then my variables are x7, x6, and x5. So the greatest common factor of the variables is x to the fifth, the lowest power present. So 3x to the fifth is what I'm going to divide each one of these numbers by. And 3x to the fifth is what I have factored out. It's now outside the parentheses. And I do each division. 3 goes into 9 three times, and x seventh divided by x fifth is x squared. Now 3 goes into 12 four times, and x six over x fifth is just x. And 3 goes into 24 eight times, and x fifth divided by x fifth cancels out. And here is the factorization of the polynomial.